You'll see in this video what food, shopping places, nature and history you can expect to see in Turin. We visited four of the largest cities in northern Italy within nine days. We landed in Milan, took a train to Turin or Torino, went from there on to Verona, from Verona to Florence or Firenze and from there back to Milano. First stop, Turin. It's actually the fourth largest city of Italy and the capital city of Piedmonte, a region in northern western Italy. It is extremely beautiful and super underrated. Turin also had such a large impact on Christianity, which I'm coming back to later on in this video. The series is called How to Fail Dolce Vita because it is the Italian expression for sweet life in Italy. And we did definitely not experience a sweet as in relaxing time there. We really had to take in a lot of sour stuff that happened to us. You'll see what and why. We stayed here for two and a half days and booked our Airbnb right next to the main train station, which you see right here. Our apartment was located in an old historical building, which was beautiful and also directly at the city center. It was a small room, but we had everything we needed. Especially the kitchen was important, which leads me directly to the topic of food. This is also a huge low budget tip. Book an apartment instead of a hotel when you're in Italy. If you want to save money, you must cook some time for yourself or enjoy a good old supermarket bread loaf in your hands, which we had to turn to so often it got disgusting. This also annoyed us so much. You gotta know when Italians hold their siesta time. It is the term for the break of the day. Italian restaurant workers really get tired around that time and just shut their business down to pause and enjoy their dolce vita life. This can vary from restaurant to restaurant and city to city, but I noticed that in Torino, they're usually closed between 2 to 8 p.m. What you gotta do? is either adjust your stomach to the hunger times of Italians or rather the day times they're willing to serve you or visit international fast food brands like McDonald's which are open all the time. So instead of pasta and pizza you'll get patties and fries but at least you're full. Or as I mentioned go to a local supermarket, in our case Lidl, where you can buy for a low amount of money a croissant or something else. They're also open during siesta times and out of all the options, this is also the best one to save money if you're short on that. Torino was actually once the capital city of Italy. When Italy was unified to the country we know of today, King Victor Emmanuel II announced that Turin shall be the capital city of its country. and only lasted four years, from 1861 to 1865, then Florence took its place until it was finally replaced by Rome. Torino's legendary Café Al Becerin was the first one in Europe to discover the heavenly mixture of espresso, milk, heavy cream and hot chocolate, the Becerin. In the Turin's dialect it means small glass. The Becerin is Turin's typical beverage whose recipe has been handed down since 1763. In 1700, coffee and or chocolate were commodities that were even more valuable than gold itself. When the coffee shop owner ran short of espresso, he tried to help himself by sort of stretching the coffee with the coca he's left. This discovery led to the finest hot beverage around town and elsewhere. This famous drink that only the wealthiest could afford back then is today available for everyone, still at the same place where it has been created, the small cafe Albecerin. My review? Honestly, it doesn't taste different to me than an average powdered coca drink. It's kind of watery, like 
I don't even taste the cream. I'm kind of disappointed since I hope to taste full creamy chocolate, not just cocoa powder. It might be due to its strong bitter taste as this is dark chocolate and not whole milk, which in my opinion would create a better taste, but it's worth to try a unique crucial point of history for the coffee industry instead of running to your well-known modern Starbucks. One of the most important sites to visit, if not the most important site of all, is the Museo de la Sindone, where the Shroud of Turin is shown to you in all its details. The Shroud of Turin, also called the Turin Shroud or the Shroud of Jesus, in Italian Sindone di Torino or Sacra Sindone. It is claimed that it depicts Jesus of Nazareth and that it is the fabric of the burial shroud which he was wrapped in after the crucifixion. The museum is very interesting and the only one of its kind in the world. Not even Jerusalem can give you that. It is interesting because here the story of the probably most famous human being that has ever lived on this planet is seen through the lens of a scientist. Church and science institutions work hand in hand here in order to prove that the man Jesus was not a myth but lived for real. While walking through the museum, you can see new and different scientific insights of the burial shroud's journey, like the plants that the shroud was made of. Its analysis shows that the cloth was made with embalming preparations or ointments, which were made of a mixture of myrrh and aloe, which were to that time only found in the region of Israel. The results of several datings and factors prove that whoever was wrapped in this shroud really was of the desert region around Jerusalem and Nazareth and lived or rather died to the time that was also mentioned in the Bible to be the period when Jesus Christ has lived. The cloth shows blood marks exactly at the points where Jesus would have been pierced with nails on hands and feet, as well as on the back where he carried the large and heavy wooden cross. It made all its way from Jerusalem to Athens, then Chambéry, and after fire broke out there and it was harmed, the cloth was brought to Turin. However, you are only able to see the photographs and copies of the shroud in the museum. If you want to witness the original relic, you'd have to go a few meters to Turin's cathedral, the Duomo di Torino. The entrance is free and many people used the opportunity to pray in front of one of the last remains of their beloved savior. Shopping doesn't come short here. Visiting Turin, you can't miss a long walk under the legendary monumental Turin Arcades, where most of the shops are located. The center of Torino has 18 kilometers of arcades. It is the city with the largest pedestrian area in Europe. Yes, in whole Europe, this is the largest shopping area you could possibly find. It is said that King Vittorio Emanuele I supposedly ordered to build two kilometers of arcades from the Piazza Vittorio Veneto to the Piazza San Carlo so that he could walk the way without getting wet when it would rain. There are three big public squares, so-called piazzas in Torino. Piazza San Carlo, where we were most of our time because it was very close to the beautiful arcades and the city center around the main train station. The Piazza Castello was right next to it. This is the place where the most tourist sites are. And the Piazza Vittorio Vineto. This was the farthest away from us and we reached it after a long, painful walk that took us about 40 minutes with detours. But it was completely worth it. It may even be the more beautiful heart of the city. We actually went into shops all the time. The best part about Torino is that, unlike Milan, which I'm not going into detail here in this video, 
You as a commoner who doesn't have some thousands of euros in your pocket to spend on Prada or Gucci are actually able to afford you something and not only go window shopping. We did enter Gucci once and that was an experience. We were almost the only people in the shop that only offered a few clothes and we were literally followed with every step we took. I felt uncomfortable even touching a piece of cloth and looking at the price tag as I was observed individually from every angle by a personal security guard. Nonetheless, if you'd like to experience how it is like to be a rich Italian, even if you look like a poor little piece of like us, you are allowed to try the clothes on. But I personally wouldn't do that, because if you break a seam or stitch by accident, you're lucky if your credit card takes out an overdraft of up to 3000 euros easily for a single piece of cloth. So looking back at the Shroud of Turin, I'd prefer the Shroud- ah! Because of all that, Turin is my top choice for you guys if you plan on going on a shopping tour in Italy. Nature. We discovered the second, even more beautiful city center after a long walk where we ended up seeing lovely parks. Torino lies directly at the Alps, which makes its landscape even more special and beautiful, probably not only in summer like here, but also in winter, especially for those who like to go rock climbing or skiing. We did not visit the Alpine mountainside, but I can assure you, even if you don't like to go hiking up there, you will have a great time if you're a nature lover. This is the bridge Ponte Vittorio Emanuele I, where the river Po runs underneath, which is by the way the largest or longest river in Italy. This is the Piazza Vittorio Veneto. It is breathtaking. We never took a public transportation here in Turin. It is a beautiful view on the Gran Madre di Dio church and that kind of looks also like an antique Roman temple. It gives you a really cool antique vibe. Here comes my special tip, never fall for their trick. There are scammers walking around the city acting as if they're deaf 
and doing god knows what with the 20 euros per person they're demanding for donation. I was kind of forced to give him something as he wouldn't let go after I couldn't deny his first attempt when he triggered my pity for him. They'll show you a paper where it's written down that they're collecting the money for a school that they're trying to open for the deaf. But I noticed when I didn't understand what he meant, he turned so gritty that he whispered words in English so that I could get what he meant, which I only realized afterwards was not possible for someone who's deaf to understand what I told him, like that I don't understand what this was about. So I feel like this is a really popular scamming tactic, at least in Torino, just be aware that if someone approaches you with a paper to sign, don't ever sign it because the moment you sign it, you are forced to give them the money. Which was also a mistake of mine because I just thought he needed a petition where he just collected the signatures of people who are in favor of the school. But it was all about collecting this money and yeah, once you fall for it, you can't go back. So always read first and then decide what you want to do. Maybe there are other people who are really trying to collect the money for the school. I don't know. That was my Torino vlog. If you're interested into the other cities that I visited, just click on the next part, which I'm going to upload soon. Verona and we will see each other in the city of Romeo and Juliet. If you like this video, please give me a huge thumb up and subscribe or you can just follow me on my Instagram account Nubs Travel Diaries where you will see all my travel photography right at the moment where I'm on my travels and every update in my story. And you'll get to know tips and facts about where I'm traveling and philosophical statements or poetic quotes. So don't miss out on that.